Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV! My name is Richard Badiner and I'm co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle Badiner who is behind, behind, behind the camera and controlling the situation. Now, today I am examining two cellos. Uh, one of them is called the Scott Chow um, SCC900, I believe. In Australia, it's labelled SCC300, and it has a story behind it. The importer, they often decide to change or upgrade the parts of the different Scotch Owl cellos. And so when they import them, they don't want them to be labelled the same as the ones that are sold in the US or overseas, um, because they say, look, we have spent this extra money on this, and why should people say, um, you know, this is slightly more expensive from the one overseas when actually you're getting better value in that way. Um, now, to us with this model, that doesn't really make a difference because we throw out all of the, the bits they originally come with and we make our own very high quality bridge and put on super fancy strings and make a new sound post and we do all of our magic to every single cello that we sell just because that's the sort of people we are. Um, so, this is a Scott Chow cello. I will play this. And now this is the Struna Maestro cello. me to start with with both of these cellos is that a lot of people when they um, go into a cello shop these days if they hear that a, uh, that a cello is made in China they instantly think that it's going to have sort of like a bright possibly slightly harsh tinny sound um, where with these two cellos the sound sort of proves that it's it's just not the case um, well, I mean, you can get all sorts of cellos in, in China, you know, it's a country with many, many people and many, 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 many different makers of, um, of cellos. Um, and these two cellos especially have beautiful, warm, mellow, but strong sounds. So I usually tell my customers not to generalise about particular countries, like say, oh, you know, the German ones are like this, or the French ones are like this, and the Chinese ones are like this. When it comes down to cellos, there's a lot of hand work that goes into them. And there's nothing to be said. You, you can't say that a particular person who was born in Germany, say, um, cannot make a particular sound from his cello because he was born in, in Germany and his hands are just shaped a particular way and he just, you know, can't make that particular sound. Or if he was born in China, he can't make this particular sound or made it, you know, or France or wherever. So it just doesn't make sense. So my advice is to choose the cello based on its merits as far as the sound and the playability goes and the, you know, the quality of its um, manufacturer and that sort of thing. Okay, having said that, these are two beautiful warm sounding cellos. Now what I have done, and um, I don't know if this is the right uh, video to get into this, but I have put very, very bright strings on the bottom to sort of clear up the bottom end, and it's, it's quite a common setup for cellos to have very, very bright, I've got these two spiracore strings on the bottom, which make the bottom strings slightly harsher, especially when you first put them on, slightly more metallic, but they they really, really clear up the bottom. And then on the top, I've got these lovely Larsen strings, which are much warmer. And so you, on the top, where often you might have a thinner sound, that is cleared up by the fact that you're using really mellow strings. And on the bottom strings, where you might usually have a more muddy sort of sound, that is cleared up by using these brighter strings. 
Um, and as you play these in, the spiral chords become slightly less brighter and it really sort of works across the cello. The other advantage of that is that um, the sort of extra vibration and resonance from those bottom two strings somehow affects the resonance of the top two strings. So those top two strings, because of the bottom two strings, start to sort of ring longer and it's really, really noticeable. So um, I have taken two quite mellow cellos and I've made them slightly um, brighter down the bottom and it, it really, really helped and it makes them sound fantastic. Um, having said that, so this one, Struna Maestro. The Strunas are, um, are, they're the development of um, seven years of my work, um, working with a, um, uh, an amazing maker in China. And this top model uses Italian spruce on the front and Bosnian maple on the back and the sides. Beautiful wood. And it's been varnished in a certain way to allow the wood to resonate the way it wants to. It's got this sort of spirit varnish underneath and an oil varnish which has been worn away to the flanks. Now if we had left that oil varnish all over at the top of the entire cello, um, it would stifle the sound very slightly. But because of the way it's varnished and because of the way it's worn, it makes it look like a very old cello but it also aids the sound. Um, now talking about, speaking of sound, I'll play the Struna Maestro again and we'll talk about the difference in sound between these two. slightly out of tune then, um, the, the top strings, and it's quite common to the strooners, um, you know, the, the plan was to make the top string very mellow and warm and beauty, beautiful, and I've described it as uh, like a, a choir of angels, and it is a bit like that, just really warm and full. <laughs> not necessarily a bad thing. It's quite sort of projecting which is really good on the top and the amount of sort of fullness or, or projection on the top can be sort of slightly modified by the, the choice of string on the top there. Um, you could hear the slight metallicness on the bottom two strings but that's more to do with the, the brand new spiracle strings on there which will slowly sort of mellow out and just even it out and turn it into a wonderful cello, which it already is actually. Hmm. Um, the Scott Chow, oh, I haven't even talked about Scott Chow. Scott Chow, um, he is just like the Rolls Royce of um, cello makers. He is, you know, famous um, uh, not only for being an amazing maker, but being able to transfer that knowledge to his workshops where they make amazing cellos under his instruction. So um, just the, the quality of workmanship is incredible. This is like even more exciting for a maker to look at and just drool all over. This is why often you find these cellos are very wet because you know, makers have just looked at them and gone, oh my gosh, and drool outside of the mouth all over the cello. It's disgusting. You should see if you can buy one before it gets to drool all over it, I would say. 
Now, yeah, so the difference is pretty much they both have similar an amount of depth. Possibly the strooner is slightly louder, slightly fuller on the top, where this has more projection on the top. Two wonderful cellos. I mean, I stock them both because they're both fantastic. Thank you for comments, and thank you for subscribing. I know you're just about to. Thank you very much. And they both get a thumbs up at Whitehorse Music.